friends, Rev Jo here. I'm so excited to share with you today a scripture passage and then a friend of mine who's going to come and share a story with you, Miss, Miss Terry. Our story today comes from the book of Luke. And in Luke, Jesus is talking to a big crowd of people. They've all gathered together to be there and hear those wise things that Jesus has to say. As he's talking to the people, he can hear some rumblings about, you know, different people wandering around in the crowd. And so he says to them that they need to love other people as they are loved by God. God loves us so much and is there to take care of us. And Jesus said, you've got to love not just the people who are nice to you, but the people who you're not as friendly with, that you don't like spending time with. You have to find ways to love everybody. Do to other people what you would like to have done to you. We don't like it when people treat us badly, do we? <laughs> no, we really don't. And sometimes it's hard to be nice to people who don't treat us as nicely as we would like. But Jesus invites us to be friendly anyway, to be kind, to be curious about why people are the way they are. Miss Terry's going to tell us a story about a lion. And I'd love to hear what you think about this story. You can put some messages with your parents in the chat after you're done and share with us what you think of this story and how you can be kind to other people too. Can't wait to see you again next week, friends. Enjoy Miss Terry's story and I'll see you later. Good morning. This morning I wanted to share a story with you. It's written by Marcus Feister and it's called How Leo Learned to Be King. Leo was a lion, king of the beasts. He woke up one day from a long nap and he stretched and he yawned and he started to roar, a very blood curdling roar. And it scared the little warthog that was there. Be quiet, said the warthog. Your ceaseless roaring is getting on my nerves. You're driving all the animals crazy. Well, Leo the lion couldn't believe that somebody would talk back to him. After all, he was the king. Just who do you think you're talking to? I am Leo, the invincible, the king of the beast. And with that, he put out his paw and he was going to hit the warthog. But just at that moment, a water buffalo came by and stood between them so that they couldn't fight. Whoa, hold on a minute, the buffalo said. We don't need a king of the beast anymore. We can take care of ourselves. Yeah, said the warthog. Like he said, we animals can make our own make it on our own. Leo gasped, clutched his heart, and said, Oh, whatever have I done to deserve this? I was always you were always a lazy show off, said the vulture. What have you ever done to deserve to be king? And more and more animals gathered around and they all agreed that Leo should not be their king, that they could take care of themselves. So Leo had nothing to do but escape out into the savannah. We'll just see how well they get along, he said. But after a while, he had to admit to himself that they seemed to be doing just fine. He said, I deserve to be served because I am the king of the beasts. It's always been that way. Why should I change? Days later, he heard a little tiny voice and then some crying. And he looked between the grass blades and he saw a little tiny mouse. Why are you crying, said Leo. The mouse took one look at that huge lion and he started to shake and he said, uh, Leo, I just wanted to cross the brook and I can't do it. No problem, said Leo. Hop on my back and hold on to my mane and I will take you across the brook. And so he did. Oh, that was amazing, said the mouse. 
Not too long after that, Leo heard a big, loud noise, and the earth began to shake, and he jumped out of the way just as the big rhinoceros was riding by. He was running so fast, the earth was shaking. And then he heard another voice saying, Hey, Rhino, what are you doing? Leo looked out and he saw a porcupine. And the porcupine was all set, upset because the rhinoceros had ruined his burrow. Take it easy, said Leo. I'll help you fix it. And so they fixed the burrow and the, the porcupine thanked Leo. He said, but now I'm worried about the rhinoceros. I wonder what was wrong with him. And he went to find the rhinoceros. He found him by a tree and he had a great big bump on his head. What happened to you, asked Leo. Well, first I was stung by a wasp and I didn't, and I, it hurt so much that I ran and I ran and I ran and I didn't pay attention to where I was going. And I crashed right into this tree. Leo found some moist leaves and he used them to cool the bump and take away the sting. You'd better stay here and rest, he said. I'll come back to make sure you're all right. And that evening, the animals all decided that Leo was a much different person and that they wouldn't mind having him be the king at all. He's the kind of king I'd like to have, said the elephant. Someone who cares about you. Someone who's kind. Someone who notices the smallest things. That's our kind of king. The very next day, the animals went to find Leo and they brought him his crown and his throne and said that they wanted him to be the king again. And Leo was surprised and very touched. And he said, dear friends, I'm delighted that you want me back. It would be a privilege to serve you, but I don't need a crown or a throne. After all, while I might be the king, I'm just an animal like all of you. In the beginning of the story, Leo was a bully, wasn't he? He was mean and he was hurtful and he didn't do anything to help the other animals. How did he change? That's right, he became kinder, didn't he? He took care of the rhinoceros when he hurt himself. He helped the little mouse get across the brook and he helped the porcupine build his house. In the Bible story that we, scripture that we read today, we heard a story of a time when Jesus said that those are the kinds of things that we should do to help other people, that we should be kind. We should not be a bully. We should show love to one another. He said a very amazing thing. He said we should love our enemies. Really, Jesus? I should love my enemies? Yes, said Jesus. That's not a very easy thing to do. It's very hard if someone is being mean to you or treating, being a bully or not sharing. It's very hard to say to that person, I like you anyway. But Jesus said in his story that he wants us to love those people, even though it's hard for us to do. He said he wants us to treat one another the way we want to be treated. If we would like people to be kind to us, we need to be kind to them. If we want people to share our, their toys, we need to share our toys. If we want to help someone who is in need, we need to do that because they need our help. And this is what Jesus would like us to do. He said our reward would be great if we learn to love our enemies and treat each other the way we would like to be treated. Can you say a prayer with me? Please repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God we, praise you we praise you that so many people love us. That so many people love us. Thank you most of all. Thank you most of all. For your own great love. For your own great love. Make us loving too. Make us loving too. Grant that we may show our love. 
grant that we may show our love by being kind to others, by being kind to others, and by offering help to those in need, and by offering help to those in need.